Hi guys, welcome to episode 5 of Post-Processing Tips for Landscape Photography. Today I'm going to be talking about one of everybody's favorite subjects, and that is how we sharpen our images. Uh, now there are a lot of different tools and, and a lot of different methods that you can use to sharpen your images. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you three of my favorite that I use the most in my images. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when we talk about sharpening our images, there always has to be a point to the sharpening. We, we never want to just apply the sharpening globally to the image because it really takes away from what exactly we're trying to show in our image. So uh, let's ha have a look at this partic particular image. Now this was shot at Tioga Lake in uh, Yosemite National Park just recently. And what I want to do is I want to sharpen for the most part these peaks and I want to draw the attention to pretty much this area right here in my image. Because I think that's the most interesting and, and that's going to kind of keep the viewer's eye in the center of the photograph. So the first, uh, the first sharpening method that I'm going to show you is called high pass sharpening now. Okay, And what high pass does is it, um, it increases the edge contrast of your images. And let me show you how this works. Now the first thing we want to do is duplicate the layer that we were working with. So what we can do is just press Command J or Control J on a PC and that's going to duplicate the layer. And we're just going to rename this. It's always good to keep track of what we're doing and we're just going to call this High Pass Sharpening. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Filter, Other, and we're going to go to high pass. Okay. Now, what we can do here is we can look at the amount of, of the radius of the pixels here that we want to do. Okay. The smaller the radius, the more the fine lines are sharpened, and the higher the radius, the more the large lines are sharpening. Now, it's important that you note that the higher the radius is, the more haloing you're going to get around the image. So I usually like to keep this pretty small, and I'm going to go with this particular image, I'm going to go about three pixels. Okay, and so we're just going to press OK. And so what that's done is it's created a gray layer, and it's created contrast in the edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here to where this says normal and we're going to change the blending mode from normal to soft light. Okay, and let's zoom in a little bit here on these peaks and let's see what this does. Okay, so let's turn it back, turn it off and turn it back on. Okay, so we've created some nice fine detail in the image here. Okay, now the other mode that you can use, which I actually use quite a bit, is overlay. An overlay creates a bit stronger effect on the image. You can see how that's creating a stronger effect. But sometimes what ends up happening on a lot of the images is that you can create a lot of halos around uh, the large edges here. So I usually, I usually like to use soft light for most of them. And I think that works pretty well. And it, it doesn't really give me too much trouble with haloing. Okay. All right, so that's not bad, but I think that we could have uh, we could have probably used a little bit more. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's undo that, and we'll again create another duplicate layer, and let's go to high pass again, and I'm going to up the radius this time. So I'm going to use let's try about six pixels. So let's do that. Let's press OK. And again, we're going to change the blending mode to soft light. And I think that's looking a little bit better. So let's zoom in just a little bit here. Okay. And we can see the effect that we've created as we turn that off and turn it back on. So that's a, a, that's a little bit more of what I was looking for here. Now, again, one of the nice things about high pass, sorry about that, one of the nice things about high pass is that it only affects edges in the image. So that means it doesn't affect the areas with uh, low detail in it, which is actually a very desirable thing when we're, sh we're doing sharpening. Okay, so let's go ahead and look one more time and see what this did. And you know what? 
really, I kind of like the global effect here. If, if it was distracting from the main subject point, I would probably mask out some of the effect in the places, but I kind of like the effect that this has done here. So that's looking pretty good. Okay. All right, so let's leave this and let's look at a couple other examples. All right, so this is Sunset Arch. And this was taken in Esculante. And uh, I really like this image. I got the last little bit of the glow uh, here on the arch. And some beautiful clouds in the background and the moon overhead. So this is looking nice, but it's a looking a little bit flat. And what we really need is a little bit of sharpening here. So we're going to use two different tools for this particular image. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use high pass. So I'm going to hit Command J or Control J on a PC. And let's go ahead and change this name. Let's change this to high pass sharpening. Okay. And let's use the same technique that we did. So let's go to filter, other, high pass. Okay. And for this image, let's go ahead and up this a little bit more. We're going to use about about 15 or so. Close enough. So let's hit OK and let's change that again to soft light. Now anytime we use this we always want to check and make sure that there's no halos going on. So we're going to zoom in and you can see what we've done here. We've added some nice detail. There's not really any halos going along here. So that's pretty good. You can see, though, that it's adding in a little bit of detail up here where we don't want it in the sky. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Okay. So you can see this is already looking a lot better. We went from a kind of flat image here to adding in some more uh, detail. All right. So let's go ahead and kind of mask out some of that detail here in the sky. So we're going to hit we're going to go down here and we're going to add a layer mask. We're going to add a white layer mask. Okay. So white means that everything on the top layer is showing through. Okay. And so we're going to make sure we have black selected. But first, let's go up here and we're going to use the quick selection tool. Okay. You can also press W to bring this up. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a quick selection of the sky here and you can see that works pretty good okay and I'm going to brush out most of this okay so I'm going to set my opacity to 70 percent okay and an easy way to set your opacity is if you just press for example the 7 key on your keyboard it'll give you an opacity of 70 percent if you press a 5 it'll give you 50 percent if you press 0 100 percent so in this particular uh, case I want to use about 70 percent black Okay, so I have black selected, I have my brush selected, and I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to brush out some of that detail in the clouds because we don't really want the detail there. Okay, so let's zoom in and see how that looks. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So we have, still have a little bit, of, little bit of grain there, but it's not too much. It's looking nice. All right, so let's go ahead and deselect that. So let's hit Command D or Control D on a PC. And we're going to use one more sharpening technique on here. So I'm going to merge, uh, I want to merge these layers to a new layer. So I'm going to hit Command Alt Shift on a Mac. And then I'm going to press the E button. And so that's going to merge all the visible layers to a new layer. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a tool called Smart Sharpening. Okay? And this is a great tool for creating small detail in your image. Um, it, is, it does apply globally, so we're going to need to mask that in. So we're going to go to Filter and Sharpen, and we're going to go to Smart Sharpen. Okay. So you can see we have a basic panel here, and we can select the amount. Okay, and you can play with how much you want to do here. You can go all the way up to 500%. I have never once used 500%, uh, but uh, you can try that out and see what you think. So I like to keep this around the 150 to 180 range. 
and you can do this as long as you keep the radius very low. You can see if I turn the radius up higher that it creates some very uh, undesirable HDR effect kind of thing on there. So let's go ahead and keep that very low. So we're going to keep that about 0.6 is looking good. Okay, and I think we can up this just a little bit more. All right, so let's press OK. And let's zoom in here and see how we look. Okay, so let's turn that off and turn it back on. So you can see it creates some nice small detail there. Okay, again, it creates it globally, so we're going to need to mask out these areas of the sky, which is not hard for this particular image. So let's again uh, add a, a layer mask. So I'm going to go down here and press this little button to bring up another white layer mask. And I'm going to use the quick selection tool again. And I'm just going to select the sky. So we're just going to select the sky. We're going to make sure that we're painting with black. Br press B to bring up our brush tool. And let's just increase the size of that. And for here, I don't want any sharpening in the sky, so I'm going to hit zero to give me 100% opacity. So let's brush through there. Pretty easy. That's good. And let's go ahead and deselect that. And let's go ahead and go back to our quick selection tool. And we're going to select this little area in here as well. This quick selection tool is pretty handy for this kind of thing. And same thing, we're just going to paint through with 100% black. And it's going to remove those areas from the image. Press, remember to press Command D to deselect. Okay, so if we zoom in here, you can see that we have some great sharpening here in this part of the image. But it's not affecting the sky, which we didn't want. So that's looking good. So this is a great way to add small detail there to the image. And we've gone from here to here. And you can see that this is a much nicer image there. The other thing I want to do here just for this particular image is I'm going to actually, I'm going to use about 30% black and I'm going to uh, mask out a little bit of the detail here in the foreground. Okay, this is going to draw our attention a little bit better to the arch here. Okay, so that's looking good. And so let's go ahead and look at one last example here. And this was taken at a very interesting uh, place in some Navajo lands in Arizona here. And um, what we want to do is we want to accentuate the detail that's going on here. And for me personally, I want to accentuate the stripes. So let's go ahead and duplicate our layer. So we're going to press Command J. Okay. And let's go up to Filter. And for this, we're going to actually use a different filter. We're going to use Topaz uh, Detail 2. Okay. This is a pretty inexpensive filter. I think it's about 20, or I think it's about $30 actually. Okay. And you can see that this is showing the entire image here. And it's showing the area that I cropped out on the image, but that's OK. So as soon as we return to Photoshop, it'll get rid of that. So let's go ahead and reset everything so you can see what we're doing. Now, there's a lot of different adjustments that you can make, a lot of uh, uh, presets here. So you can do some micro contrast. You can see that's actually a really nice filter that you can use just like that. You can uh, remove some of the details. So there's a lot of things that you can play with here. But let's just go ahead and play with a couple of the sliders here so you can get an idea what this does. So I'm going to increase the small detail. And I'm going to bring that up here to about 18. I think that's good. And let's take up the small boost. And let's bring that up a little bit. And let's also increase the medium detail and maybe the medium boost just a pinch. And uh, I'm going to increase the large detail just a little bit. Okay. All right. So we've we started here. So it's, it kind of looks a little bit soft. And then we brought it up to here. Now this effect is far too much. 
but in when you use Topaz uh, Detail in combination with Photoshop, there's some really fun things that you can do. So let's press OK. It's just going to process that real quick. And the reason we created the new layer is so now we can mask in and out everything that we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and this time we're going to use a black layer. So we're going to press, uh, we're going to hold Alt or uh, Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac. And we're going to press the same layer mask button. And this time it's going to give us a black layer mask. Okay, so black means that everything on the top layer is concealed. Okay, so we're going to, this time we're going to paint with white. And we're going to use, let's go ahead and use an opacity of about 50%. So let's use about 50%. And we're going to brush through this stripe here on the image. So again, I want to draw the details, uh, the attention here to these stripes. Okay. And so let's do that again. Let's go down here. And remember, you can adjust the size of your brush with the bracket keys. So let's paint in just a little bit there. Okay. And I'm going to use a little bit less. I'm going to use about 30%. So I'll press the three key, make a little bit larger brush. And we're going to paint down here. Okay. So that's good. Let's do that one more time. There we go. All right. So we've gone from here to here. So Topaz Adjust is, or Topaz Detail is a really easy software to use. Um, I do recommend if you, uh, if you get it to use it in combination with Photoshop, so that way you can mask in and out to the areas that you want, because remember, global sharpening isn't always a good thing. Okay? So again, uh, we've used three different tools. We've used uh, High Pass Sharpening, which creates a, uh, uh, a lot of detail in a lot of contrast in the edges. We've used smart shop sharpening, which creates some small detail throughout our image. And we've used Topaz detail, which is a great tool that you can pick up that uh, will allow you to do to use a lot of different uh, kinds of sharpening on your images. You can adjust the large detail, the small detail, medium detail as well, and you can get some really nice effects from that. All right, guys, so I hope this is helpful. Uh, remember, again, when you're using uh, a sharpening, make sure that you're drawing the attention to a part of the image and not just globally sharpening the image. Okay, thanks. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope you found this useful.